So here I'm taking Debbie's Design Diaries Crystal Clear Chandelier. This is a patina. You can mix it with other DIY paints, but this is also a great decoupage medium. It has a lot of different features. I put it in this dog bowl that I'm not using anymore. It's very liquidy. It um, kind of has the color of a, of a glue, really. And I'm just going to put a good coat of this on here. And I'm gonna let it dry. Once it's dried, I'm going to decoupage the paper that you see over there. I've already decoupaged this paper on the back of my cabinet. And I'm gonna put this on the shelves. This is gonna be a cabinet that's gonna house my DIY paints in my Finders Keepers booth. And um, I've been looking for something for a long time and I finally came across this cabinet and I, when I found it, I knew I wanted to do something very different. I knew I wanted to use gold leaf and um, different colors and make it stand out. I'm using our brush, our brush that we sell. Um, it's a paint pixie brush that was designed for DIY paint. I only use paint pixie brushes. I love them. This is a synthetic. I just need to drop more, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Um, this is a synthetic brush that we sell. I also have the natural bristle brushes that I purchased directly from uh, Paint Pixie. Um, I love it because she is just, she was a, a painter, she did murals, she does furniture, she does lots of DIY crafts, and um, I love supporting small business and mom and pop shops versus big brand. Um, I believe in that. And so I'm grateful to have a quality brush um, by this lady, Josie. So I'm just putting this on here and I'm gonna let this dry. And I'm just making sure that I'm getting the ends really well because I really want a good adhesion to my paper. So it doesn't matter um, how I put it on, I just have to get it on. All right, so the Medium is dry. There, it's got like a tooth to it. I can feel it. It's, it's a little bit rough. And um, I've gone ahead and I've placed my paper exactly where I want it. Um, I'm making sure that all of my ends, all of my corners are covered by the paper. And I've got my iron here and I'm going to iron this paper on and it's going to adhere the medium is gonna heat up and it's gonna adhere the paper to the wood. Now I have a heat press, so I have these special um, sheets that help uh, protect the iron. It also helps protect the paper from scorching. Um, but if you don't have that, you can use just parchment paper and you just wanna cover it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly um, start ironing it. And I'm gonna iron away, because I want any air bubbles to escape. So I'm gonna iron this way. And I'm putting some pressure because I really want to, especially to the corners, I want to make sure that all of the corners adhere. Here you go. So I'm just gonna do the same thing to the second one. And then I'll, I'll show you the next step. All right, so as you can see, the paper has adhered 
I've ironed both sides. This is still a little bit warm. I've poured a little bit more of my crystal clear chandelier patina. Like I said, it has dual purposes. Well, more than dual, it's, it's got several. It's a top coat, it's a decoupage medium, and it is also a transfer gel. Um, so it's got multiple purposes and I basically have only used it for decoupaging. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and apply another coat on top. This is what's going to give it a durable finish. It's going to make sure that it stays adhered to the wood. And sometimes you might see a few wrinkles coming up because I'm wetting the paper. Um, and so you may see some wrinkles form. And that's happening right here. I don't know if you can tell on the video, but it's okay. It's going to suck back up um, to the bottom and it's going to even out. Now on occasion, I have, I left my iron out because if I need to, once it's dry, I can go over it again and it's going to even out. Now you can do this on any kind of paper. I've also done it with tissue paper. Um, I have a picture that I can post on here of my peacock table and I used a fine tissue paper, it's a decoupage tissue paper by Roy Cycled that I buy on Zazzle.com and I did the same technique on top of the table with tissue paper. I need a little bit more, so I'm just going to pour it out on here. And I'm being a little bit more generous on this coat um, as well. I had this paper, I used it on a desk, um, on top of a, a little girl's desk. I painted it pink, an ombre, and I had it left over and it had gold on there and it had the rose and so I just thought it would be a good match for this cabinet. Just wanted something different. And again, I'm just you know, making sure I get all the edges. So that is step two. And then I'm just gonna let it dry and I'm gonna look at it once it's dry. And if I need to iron it a little bit more, I'll take my Teflon sheet. And you can buy these on Amazon if you're gonna do a lot of decoupaging, if you don't wanna use parchment paper. Um, but these are just Teflon sheets. They usually come in a couple of, um, into a pack. And then you can use it to iron on your 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 papers. Um, you probably can tell it looks pretty smooth, but there are a few spots where it is a little bit wrinkled. And this is actually okay. You could leave this alone, but I'm gonna try to show how you can re-iron it. I'm gonna grab my Teflon sheet right here, and I'm gonna cover this up. I've already got my iron on, I've got it set on cotton, and I'm going to go ahead and iron it on and try to remove a few of those wrinkles. This definitely is multi-steps. Another way that you could decoupage is by using a spray adhesive but because this is a really, really fine paper, it's actually gift wrap paper that I purchased at Walmart. Um, it's, it, the problem with the spray adhesive is that it really sticks and it is really, really difficult. <laughs> There's a piece of hair. Um, it is really, really difficult to play with it. And so you don't have any wiggle room 
unless you're using a thicker paper. But the wrinkles are definitely coming off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do another pass to smooth it out. And I'm just gonna apply pressure and just go really slow because I really want it to get hot and get these wrinkles out. And honestly, it really doesn't bother me. I really could leave it, but I just want to show you how you can do it um, if you wanted to do it and it bothered you. And you can hear that stick because the um, liquid uh, patina is hot and it definitely has smoothed out the wrinkles that I had here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and reapply this right here. It came up a little bit. So I'm just gonna apply it. And all I'm gonna do, and I could do another coat of the liquid patina if I wanted, um, but what I'm gonna do is actually do a coat of top coat, big top, top coat. Because uh, that is what I'm using on the entire piece. I mean, I've got great adhesion right here. So what I wanna do, is I actually want to show you, see so yeah, I cut it a little bit larger. So I'm going to show you how to finish this off. I'm going to take a sanding block. You could actually take a nail file if you wanted. And what you're going to do is you're going to rub it down one way. You don't want to go back and forth. You just want to go up and down just like this, one way. And it's going to create a crease. And actually, I'll lift it up. I can really it. And it starts ripping it. Sorry for the noise. But you see it starts ripping it. It just starts coming apart. And you get a very, very crisp edge. 